Over a hundred years ago, there were billions of American chestnut trees across the eastern U.S. They made plentiful food for wildlife and humans and were an important part of the forest ecosystems. Humans depended on the strong wood to build houses and furniture and fence poles and telephone poles and railroads. But this was all about to come to a sudden end. There were other chestnut species growing in Europe and Asia, and in the 1800s, people started importing them to the U.S. What they didn't realize is that they were also bringing new chestnut diseases with them. One disease called Phytophthora root rot, or PRR, started killing trees in the south. Another, called chestnut blight, was discovered in 1904 and started killing trees in the north. Within 50 years, chestnut blight had spread throughout the entire range. The blight caused cankers in the bark, which strangled the tree, killing it down to the roots. Some root systems survived and sent up sprouts, only to die back again from blight before they could produce nuts. The tree is now considered functionally extinct because it rarely reproduces in the wild. In 1983, the American Chestnut Foundation, or TACF, started trying to save the tree. Asian chestnut trees, like the Chinese chestnut, had a natural resistance to these diseases. Uh -huh. So TACF started making American-Chinese hybrids to try to breed disease resistance into the American chestnut. They grew the hybrid offspring and selected trees that appeared to have the best blight resistance. To maintain the tall straight form and the ecological function of the American chestnut, they backcrossed the hybrids with American chestnuts for three generations, each time selecting the most disease resistant offspring to breed. Then a better way to breed came along. Advances in genetics allowed us to read a tree's DNA. By assessing this genetic code or genome, no, not that kind of gnome. We could speed up the breeding cycle and make smarter selections along the way. Here's how it works. TACF scientists and volunteers studied more than 5,000 backcross trees in orchards across the eastern United States. They measured eight different traits related to disease resistance, like whether the tree had large cankers. They also took a DNA sample from a leaf of each tree. The DNA data extracted by a lab shows thousands of snippets of genetic code called markers. This genotype information, along with the measurements of physical traits known as the phenotype, is entered into a big computer model. The model then matches up genetic variations with physical signs of disease resistance. Now we can use this computer model to do a better job of figuring out which of these thousands of trees have the highest disease resistance based only on their genotype. The model can also use the genetic markers to figure out how much American chestnut ancestry each tree has, like when you submit a DNA sample to an ancestry service. That way, we can select the parent tree with high levels of American chestnut ancestry and high levels of disease resistance. We breed these best parent trees together by collecting pollen from one and applying it by hand to the flowers of another. This is called controlled pollination. Then we collect the nuts, grow them in a greenhouse, and within a couple of months, as soon as they've grown leaves, we can take DNA samples to see which of the offspring have the highest predicted disease resistance. Now we can grow those best trees until they're old enough to breed, about five to seven years, and start the cycle over again, improving disease resistance in each generation. This process is called recurrent genomic selection, or RGS. We use the genome to select the best parents in a repeating or recurring cycle. RGS has already been used for decades to successfully breed complex traits like body size in chickens and crop yield in corn. Within one or two generations, we predict that we can have American chestnut trees with high enough disease resistance to survive in the wild again. We hope you'll join us in this mission to restore the American chestnut by becoming a member, volunteering with your state chapter, or donating to support TACF's breeding program Together, we can save the American chestnut.